Good to have you back, David. How you been? Richard, I'm good. How are you doing? Sir? Okay. What's your concern level for the Cleveland Cavaliers right now, David? Nah, I, you know, one to ten, maybe a six, seven. Okay. Um, I don't think there's. I don't think it's anything that's uh, insurmountable. I do think they got to make a couple of decisions, though. I mean, we saw the lineup they used the other night where LeBron's playing the four and they put Shumpert in at the three. I mean, I really. I think that's their best lineup with the personnel they have, especially if they're going to play small. They're just, they're just a different team. I don't know LeBron's sort of resisted playing the four uh, from time to time, but I really just think that's his best position. He's still, as far as I can tell, not guardable at the four. So, um, you know, they run, they get out, they get deflections, they, they can do things that they, they just can't do with a kind of more traditional bigger lineup. Um, and I think it gets him more room to operate. Um, and so – uh, if they stay with that lineup, I think they have a chance to be pretty good uh, going forward. Uh, I, I don't, you know, look, I, I think that the, the issue there is a the bigger issue there is, you know, can he and Kyrie figure things out? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Rich. Um, but I don't think it's something they're going to give up on after, you know, two seasons together. I mean, there, you know, he came there because, in part, they had a young point guard that he could play with. And I think Kyrie stayed there in part because LeBron was coming. So, you know, I would be very surprised if either of them gave up on it so quickly. But, you know, I never say never. Well, how many, that much. How many fours, though, bring the ball up the floor and, 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 and dribble at the top of the key like they are the point guard? I mean, last night against, you know, Memphis, Kyrie Irving yeah. was the one who was making all the shots to get them back in the game. And then LeBron, LeBron was the one distributing. I mean, how, how does that how does that? How does that work sustainably, David? Well, I think it works. I mean, I think LeBron, we, look, we all know LeBron would rather pass than shoot anyway, right? right? I mean, that's kind of his MO. He wants to get other guys involved, and Kyrie certainly is a guy that's capable of scoring. I mean, that's kind of his thing, right? I mean, his deal is to put the ball in the basket. So I would much rather, I think it's much more effective for LeBron to find Kyrie and for Kyrie to, you know, act on the weak side and break a guy down than for Kyrie to find LeBron and LeBron try to break a guy down when you know everybody's going to load up on the other side. So uh, I, think that, I think that actually works better for them. I mean, I don't think they lost the game because of that, you know. Um, but there are other things that, that they're still not, uh, I don't think, locked in on, especially I think at the defensive end where, where they still have some games where the energy is just not there and they don't, they don't defend the way that I think they're capable of defending. So, um that's why, again, I think they have to stick with a smaller lineup. I think that's among their best defensive lineups now. And you may, you know, if you get in the playoffs in, in, in the East and you're, you're going to play against maybe, you know, Chicago or somebody in the first round that can play big, then okay, you can go, you can maybe go back to the big lineup. But I think if you're trying to beat Golden State, you know, I think that small lineup is going to be a more, a more effective lineup than trying to beat them with bigs. David Aldridge joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So how viable a threat do you think to, is Toronto? to Cleveland's uh, road you back know, to the finals? I, I, think, I think they have a chance. Um, I think they've got, you know, some of the things that are probably uh, effective against Cleveland. You know, I think uh, having a, a very strong point guard that can attack Kyrie defensively, because that's not a strong point, to be, to be charitable, um, you know, is a must. Um, I think that having – it's going to really – they're going to really need Tamara Carroll to be 100%, I think, or uh, to have any real chance. Because I, I, I don't think that the backups and reserves, you know, would be able to do anything with LeBron in terms of shutting him down or slowing him down. I think – not that Tamara is a shut – I'm not saying he's going to shut him down either, but I think Tamara has a better chance <clears throat> if he's healthy of, of at least uh, making LeBron work at the defensive end. Um, but they, but the guard play is so good that, you know, they're going to be in a lot of games, and I think they can certainly compete with Cleveland as they've shown during the season. So who's the biggest threat then? Is, is Boston a viable threat? I mean, who's who? Who do you think, with all of our hand wringing about Cleveland and being able to mesh and play and Lou yeah. in favor of Blatt and you know. Uh, LeBron working out and screaming at the camera on his Instagram account. I mean, when it all comes down to it, who, who's going to who's going to derail him and send him home potentially? Honestly, honestly, in the East, I, I really don't see anybody that can really, you know, t 
take them. I mean, I, hmm. I think that Cleveland, I think that Toronto, to your point, maybe has the best chance if they're healthy. Um, they certainly uh, play very well at home. They've had a great record at home this year. Um, but, you know, if Miami were whole with Bosch, they would have a chance, I think, with their experience, uh, their ability to play multiple lineups. And I know they played really well without them so far, but I just don't think without, it, without Bosch, without that perimeter threat outside, uh, you know, at that four or five spot, I just, you know, defensively they've been really good. But I just don't see that group beating them four times out of seven. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Joe Johnson chips the scale in a different way than I thought of. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think Bosch is so key to them having a a real chance against Cleveland. Um, I just don't see how they can beat them four times without them. David Aldridge joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's your takeaway from the Warriors' dud in Staples on Sunday? Uh, you know, I, we've both been around long enough to know every every team in the league has four or five of those a year where, for whatever reason, it's just not there. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's early starting time or boys were out late <laughs> 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 or whatever it was, uh, you just don't have it four or five times a year, you know. So that was one of their – one of their we just don't have it today games. And they got – you know, that happens. Um, so I don't think – there's no – certainly no – um, no overarching concern or yeah. anything like that. <laughs> you know, uh, they're, they're, they're still head and shoulders above everybody else other than San Antonio in the league. So, um, you know, I think that they're, uh, you know, I think they'll be fine. And I think San Antonio is going to be kicking themselves for, you know, having they had a chance to really close the gap last night and get close and put some pressure on them. And they didn't do it, and that that may cost them. Yeah, they lost in Indianapolis last night. Yeah. So with 20 games to go, do you think they break the Bulls' record? Do you think they lose only three or less the rest of the way? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of punt on the question. I'm just what I what I've told people is I got to see these next eight games, eight to ten games. Okay. Um, if they go seven and one, or nine and one, or eight and two, um, I think they're gonna have to go for it at that point because you're too close not to. You know, you get down to the last 10 games and you have a chance. Lord knows Golden State can go 9-1 to finish out. Um, you know, but if it's if they go 5-3 and three or something like that, then I, I would say no. But if they, only, if, they, if they only lose one game out of the next eight or nine, then I think they have a chance because they'll have a little bit of wiggle room. They've still got those two games with San Antonio at the end. And San Antonio, last time I checked, was also undefeated at home. So, right. um, you know, so I think San Antonio's going to get them at least once. Um and then they've, you know, so I, I would say let's look at these next eight to ten games, and if Golden State comes through them, you know, if they're 64 and seven, 65 and seven going into the last ten, I think they'll get it. And just to show you how much oxygen's taken up by the Spurs and obviously Golden State in, in the conference, um, DeAndre Jordan returned to Dallas last night again. I know he's been there before, yeah. But I mean that right that registered hardly a blip. And then, you know, he destroyed him. I mean, 23 points, 20 rebounds. And he's come on strong lately. And the Clippers are going to get Blake Griffin back. What, what, what chances do you give the Clippers to get Blake dropping him back in? And obviously, you know, I know that they're the, they're the big three there, but it's going to take some time that they can actually make a run here, David. A considerable run. Um, the problem for the Clippers is, well, the problem for the Clippers is, it has nothing to do with that. If they finish fourth, they play Memphis in the first round in all likelihood. And Memphis, and them, I mean, Memphis, at least they used to be able to. They may not be able to do it now without Gasol. I, I grant you that. But Memphis has given them fits in the playoffs the last, you know, the top, last couple of times they played. Mm-hmm. And then they would have to play Golden State in the second round. If they finish third, they got to play San Antonio in the second round. Mm-hmm. So there's no easy, there's no, um, there's no path for them to avoid playing either Golden State or San Antonio in the second round. If they only had to play one of them once in a conference final, I would say maybe they have a chance. But since they can't get up to second, um, I don't know how they, they can't avoid. They got to play both of them. I don't, even if they could beat San Antonio in the second round, I don't. How much would they have left to play Golden State? So do you and vice versa <laughs> for that matter? So do you discount Oklahoma City for the same reason, based on also their their inability to close uh, for a week's time against the, some of the top competition? I, 
I don't, based on what I've seen the last week, it was what we've all seen, yeah. how do they beat them? I don't know how you beat either of them four times the way they have played. They've played well against them, but they haven't closed it. They haven't finished. And I just, right now, I don't see it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see it. I, I haven't seen anything from anybody out west that leads me to believe that they can beat San Antonio and or Golden State in some order to get to those finals. David, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Sure, Rick. We'll chat pleasure, soon. Man. Thank you. You bet. At D Aldridge. TNT on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.